vlogging. Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of the vlog. I hope you enjoyed part one. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure you check it out, comment, like, and subscribe. So to pick up where we left off, we're diving into day five with a super chilled pool day. What are the options? You lucky how that hand landed. To the city centre. <laughs> This is our driver. What's your name? My name is Karafa. Karafa? Karafa, yes. Karafa. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> what, about, what about you? What's your name? Rihanna. Rihanna? Yeah. Oh, nice to meet you, Rihanna. And we've got... What is the name of her? Malaika. Malaika? Yeah. Oh, nice to meet you, yeah? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, well. So on day six, we drove into Banjul, which is the country's capital, and we went to do some sightseeing of their famous Arch 22, and also to go to the Albert Market for some souvenirs. Malaka wanted to make up a few more outfits for her family, so we're back to find some fabric, and then later on, we're gonna go to get them made up by the oh, tailors that we okay. went to before. Oh, is this the River Gambia? Where's the, where's the River Gambia? River Gambia the side, you know? Oh, okay, okay. Malaika, Malaika, yeah. I think you are movie. I make a movie. The famous singer. Is Malaika a singer? No. The more you need, the more difficult you're gonna get. I'm gonna leave him. 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 I'm gonna leave you know, the, the work is, is very hard, definitely. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Say cheese, hey, cheese. happy families. Happy. <laughs> Actually, a video. 
So now it's day seven and we're off to Senegal to go on a safari. It's my first safari, so I was so excited. We needed to drive to Banjul, get a ferry across the river to Farra, and then drive on to Senegal from there. So something that's commonly done in a lot of countries and in Gambia is to take pencils, pens, notebooks and sweets for the children and the school kids that you see on the way and I absolutely love the idea of it. They love receiving it and really appreciate it and if you don't travel with it from home then there's loads of people selling them in various places and you can pick some up. Many. So on the way to the safari, you have to cross the border from Gambia to Senegal and go through passport and immunisation checks. So we had to make a quick stop to do this. Go on, Tago. Are you not going to do a bit of horse riding? But, but no, I hate horses. But, but me, I will oh, not look at you. Oh, where's he going? See him there. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you can see that coming. <laughs> yeah. Turn off the, rhino. He's turned off the engine. Good, good morning. <laughs> so as we pulled up, this rhino decided to start putting on a whole big performance of strength and this display, which was just shocking. So basically, the story with him is that they put him into the park with a female, but she rejected his advances and wasn't interested in him. So he decided to kill her, and now he's the only rhino in the park, and he's all alone. She's really sad. Yes, now she's thinking, thinking. They call this the crocodile tree because the bark actually grows in this pattern, like crocodile skin. Like they have a big group, this buffalo. Yeah. So it's the one uh, fighting the father, so that he can be lead the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they, the father kick him out of the group, so that, that is why he's he, on his own. Yes, he's on his own. But when he go and fully get power, he go and fight the father, and then he will yeah, kick yeah, him yeah. out to lead the, the group. Oh, okay. And anything you see, you want to ask Gregson, who are highly well. Yeah. And anything you see here, you want to ask Greg, so you're high level. No luck Only in Senegal here. Yes. Only in Senegal you can able to see it. Oh, she's getting up. Yeah, she's done, eh? Yeah? Oh, she's looking. Get it, girl. Hey, boo. Oh, 
Are we going around? Oh my god. You see it clearly? Yeah. The markings are crazy. Is nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, love, I just really think it's nice, beautiful. It? Yeah. Maybe later we borrow with the polo. Yeah. You can borrow us your polo. Oh, give us some nuts. Or give him. This is doing the cashier too. Oh. Hi. Take it where? Take one. Are you gonna pick him up? Oh, oh, oh! Don't hurt him. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Is he gonna stand up? So that evening we then moved on to our second hotel which was called Bamboo Garden. The reason we changed hotels was because we extended our trip and so obviously needed somewhere else to stay for the second half so we found this one which was really nice and the staff were amazing. Following that we entered into day 8 and we booked to go on to the Kunta Kente tour which basically takes you to the island in which there was a slave trade and where Kunta Kente's story is based. So, guys? We just took down. <laughs> to Barra. Yeah. In the car. I'm gonna film what's going on. I'm gonna go on another little tour. It's a similar route to Senegal in that we needed to take the ferry to Barra, but then it was a much longer drive to the island. Once you cross over, you're then basically driving on a dirt road for about an hour. They call these free massage roads because it's so bumpy, you're just getting thrown around the car. So it's not great as I get really bad travel sickness as well, but we finally made it and we were greeted by a lovely village of people. This tree on the island is around 300 years old, which is crazy, and it's just got so many contours and changed over the years, it looks so beautiful. So after an extremely bumpy ride, we made it to Kunta Kente Island. We now need to get a boat over to where the slave trade was. Um, and well, we see made what it. that's <laughs> like there. So, yeah, now we're going to get on the tiniest boat ever. Should be fun. Oh, it's one of these. I'm getting nervous. Is that better? I hope so. Let me put my phone away. What is it, a jump? <laughs> Sit down on the floor. Hey, easy, easy. Yeah. I'm not going to jump up. Walk there, walk there. Walk there, only walk in the way. Up, 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 up. Strong okay. lady. Come over. Here, face this way? Yeah. Can you swim? Yes, I can, but I need that. You need that. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Let me take my bag off. Hold on. Is that it? Oh. One? Yeah, that one too. So you sit down, sit Good. here. Are you alright though? Where's your life jacket? 
You know what? I don't even need a life jacket, man. You better put one on. Throw me this water, man. Yeah. I'll shoot like a fish. Well, we're off. Hey! <laughs> We arrived and the tour started. It was a really eye-opening experience that I recommend if you want to get the full history of the country, insight into the slave trade and the changes the country has made since. It's definitely well worth a visit. So it was acquired in 1456 by the Portuguese and one of their sailors died called Andrew died here and the island was called after him. It was called St. Andrew's Island before James Island came to be James Island when the British administrated and then the, uh, finally in 2011 the Gambian people decided to call it or suggested to call it St. Uh, uh, Kunta Kinta Island. So all the slaves were coming here, this is where they wait for their shipment and they were kept here for a period of a fortnight, two weeks and from after two weeks they will put them in the ship and transport them across to America. You know. So up to seven, six to seven hundred people can be kept here at its high time. Then it was twice bigger than the recent size. And then they have also a section for the children. So they keep them in different sections to avoid uh, speaking among themselves, you know, to uh, escape. So escapes, yeah. And then behind you, you can see the broken dungeons. This mm -hmm. is where they have been kept. Wow. They are complete slave dungeons. So when they were destroyed from the wars, from the bombardments. So that's the administrative building. That they were. Yeah. Yes, they, are, they have a councillor who registers the slaves and they have a governor who oversees everything. So we have a court, the courtroom here. This is where decisions, discussions are, took place or decisions were made. Is this where they would auction yeah. the slaves? Yeah. Yeah. If they commit crimes so or if there is anything to talk about, this is where it's going to be held. Right. Yes, and the governor is going to finalize mm -hmm. to say what is to be said. We then went on to visit the museum which is included in the price and shows how the black community have gone on to make amazing differences and achievements in history and celebrates them which is a nice touch to the end of the tour. That evening we attended a beach party. I didn't get much filming of any of the nightlife but Gambia has a really busy nightlife which we enjoyed most of the days so here's a little snippet of that. When you have it like zero percent, like fresh, is you can drink it no problem. But if you keep it like for three, four days, it ferments. Ferment. It, it ferment, yeah. And if you drink it, you can see the pen, pink elephant flying. Eh? Pink <laughs> elephant. Where do you where do you normally want to be your sun? Your sun day? Facing the sun, yeah.
Empire's Beach and it's amazing. So gorge. It's probably about 35 degrees today. Yeah. <sighs> Beautiful. So we're just gonna chill and then get some fruit and you can eat on the beach, which would be lovely. And then they're playing African drums behind us. I don't think we can see. But um, they've got entertainment. It's cute. So this is us for the next couple of hours. Can't actually see a thing. Mmm, sweet. We then took a walk down the beach as the fishermen had been bringing in all the fish, hence all the birds going crazy. And you could see how they were sorting all the fish and the lobsters. I did record it, but there were dead fish everywhere, so I didn't want to put them in, but this is the typical routine they follow each day. We then stayed for the gorgeous sunset and then drove back home to Kaloli. Last minute. And that's them all. <laughs> so we're leaving. Are you going to miss us? Oh, yes. <laughs> we're going to miss you guys. Oh. Come back sooner. We will. Wouldn't that be nice? Welcome on board this Thomas Cook Airlines flight, take you to Gatwick. With one of your allocated seats, please take your seats as quickly as possible, ensuring all hand luggage is placed in the overhead lockers or when well the seat is in front of you. Bottles and large or heavy bags must not be placed in the overhead hooks and one. Right to departure. We also ask for any device that has.